In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get full marks for every diagram question in paper 2. Here's a breakdown on how marks are allocated for the diagram questions. Your first mark comes from labeling both of your axes. Your second mark is when you accurately draw the original curves. The third mark comes from the new curve or the new point such as a shift in demand, supply, or the PPF. And lastly, comes from drawing the arrows, illustrating the shift, or a new label and equilibrium. I would do both. So here's an example. Our first mark comes from labeling the axes. The second mark is the original line with the label. Our third mark comes from the movement of the line so in this case, PPC1 is shifting to the left to PPC2. And the final mark comes from labeling of the PPC2 and also the arrows. So this one is for a demand and supply curve. Our first mark comes from labeling the axes. The second mark comes from the original equilibrium, which is D1 and S1, with the correct labels to P1 and Q1 which gives us our second mark. The third mark comes from accurately shifting the supply curve from S1 to S2, illustrated here. And the final mark comes from labeling the new equilibrium P2 and Q2. Now this is a guide on how to get both marks for the explanation marks for your diagrams. This will be applicable to questions that require you to analyze using a diagram. So the first mark comes from the reason for the change. So for example, high birth rates will increase the demand for toys. And then a second mark comes from the effect. So for example, high demand will raise price and quantity of toys. So this is the effect of the reason. And that's how you get both marks. So here's my example. Capital goods are an essential resource to produce goods and services. A fall in capital goods will decrease the production of other goods. This is my reason. Potential output decreases from PPC1 to PPC2, which reduces the country's productive capacity. And this is the effect of my initial reason. Okay, so here's another example. A discovery of new oil will increase the supply of all goods as oil is a key component to the production of goods. And the effect of this is that this will increase the supply of all goods, which reduces its price and quantity supplied in the market. So let's go on to some example candidate responses. Now the question is, analyze using a production possibility curve diagram the effect on an increase in unemployment in an economy. Now firstly, the candidate was able to label the axes appropriately, here and here. And as there should not be a gap between the curve and the axes, here and here, the candidate did not get a mark for drawing the initial PPC curve. And they won't get the third mark for shifting the PPC curve. Now, please note that shifting the diagram to the left is incorrect, as unemployment is just short term, which reduces the economy's efficiency. Therefore, the correct curve or the correct method for this is shifting it from A into B. The candidate scored an additional mark here by recognizing a fall in output. As you can see, an increase in unemployment will mean there will be less workers that are working to produce output. This will decrease the amount of output produced, causing the PPC curve to shift inwards. This is an effect and is clearly missing a reason why. Hence why the candidate scored 2 out of 6, 1 for the label and 1 for the effect. Looking at the mark scheme here, as you can see, there's one mark allocated for axes, one mark allocated for the initial curve drawn, 
one mark allocated for the two production points, such as A and B, illustrated here, and one mark for the movement of the production point inwards indicated by an arrow or lettering. Now, in this particular case, there's two. There's A to B, and also there's an arrow. Okay, so let's improve this example candidate response to six out of six. Let's see how I've done it. Okay, so for my diagram, I get one mark for the axis. I get one mark for the original curve. I get one mark from marking it from A to B. And my final mark comes from the arrow, shifting from A to B. Now, what I like doing is briefly repeating the question. So it says the effect of an increase of unemployment in an economy. So what I have written here is an increase in unemployment will lead to inefficient utilization of resources. So the reason for point A going down to point B is the inefficient utilization of resources. This is due to unemployment. So that is our reason which gets us our fifth mark. And for our final mark, we need to talk about the effect. And the effect of this is that it reduces the GDP of the economy. And this will get us our sixth and final mark. Okay, moving on to the next one. So the question here is analyze using a production possibility curve diagram, the effect of a decrease in the size of a country's labor force on its economy. So just having a look at how the marks are allocated for the diagram, as per usual, one mark for the labeling of axes, one mark for the original curve, one mark for the new curve, and one mark for the arrow. And the answer goes as follows. When there is a decrease in the size of a country's labor force, PPC will shift inward from A to B. This will reduce the maximum capacity of output and the country's productive potential. This explanation is a very good explanation of the effect. However, it is missing a reason for the decrease in the size of a country's labor force. And the answer to this is that the country has experienced a reduction in resources, which is, in this case, labor resources. Right, so this is the mark scheme. So as we can see here, the diagram drawn is correct. And these are the allocation of marks. Axes correctly labeled, initial curve drawn, new curve drawn, and also shift to the left indicated by an arrow or letters. The candidate did say lowers productive capacity, but did not give a reason to this, which is reducing its resources. Okay, so let's improve this example candidate response. It's essentially the same answer. However, I've also included a reason. So it sounds like this. A decrease in the size of labor force, remember, I've copied this from the question, will reduce the human resources available as a factor of production in an economy. This is my reason. This will lead to an inward shift from PPC1 to PPC2 resulting in the reduction of the maximum capacity of output. This is the effect of a reduction of human resources available as a factor of production. So that will be the last and final mark. I hope that helped. I hope you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.